Hello you all I am back again with one of my bigger projects. A plastics pyrolysis apparatus that is designed to pyrolytically transform organic macromolecules into a crude oil-like mixture. This is the second reactor design I am trying out. Because the first one had a insufficient sealing flange and sealing combination it tended to catch fire. But I was able to weld a PN6DN100 weld neck flange into the system that can seal quite good with just a normal gas seal. So let's get started. As you can see I am loading the reactor up with waste plastics of any kind except halogenated ones. You can use just any kind of waste as long as it is organic meaning it is made out of hydrocarbons. You can also use damp and wet materials but this will take you a lot more energy because all the water boils off before any thermal cracking happens. One point to make here, I did not load the reactor to the maximum due to my gas bottle being quite empty. But normally you would fill it up so that nothing more fits in there limiting the amount of air and oxygen being present. For the ceiling I am using a isotherm 800 gas ceiling rope. This was sponsored to me by Friends Illit the company that produces it. It comes as a long rope and has to be cut to the length that is needed. To install it you tape the ends together with aluminium duct tape and with some small stripes fix it on the flank so it does not move while you screw on the lid. Note that this ceiling only works for gases and will horribly fail and cause fires if any liquid hydrocarbons get to it, due to the material soaking up the liquids, and letting them pass through where they ignite with the flames the burner makes. So keep this in mind if you use the same ceiling. But now that we filled the reactor with material and installed the ceiling, let's screw on the lid. For this I had some help as you can see because the welding neck is kinda too close to the reactor. It takes some time to install all the screws, and when you tighten them the ceiling compresses and you have to re-tighten the others. So keep tightening the screws until all of them are very hard to tighten even more. Normally at this point I would fill the reactor with carbon dioxide to get rid of any oxygen that leads to unwanted side reactions such as the formation of water or dioxins but due to my carbon dioxide being empty and the fact that my time is very limited due to my job, I just went with some oxygen being present. But for the record you should not do the same because it decreases the yield and increases the formation of toxic substances and that is something we do not want. But enough off this. Let's take a look at the burner I build to get everything nice and warm. It is a simple design that's perfect for heating the round bottom of the reactor vessel and has nice tight holes for the gas air mixture to flow out of it. I also build my own carburetor out off some 3 quarters of an inch pipes by simply welding a 3 quarter inch plug at one end of an 3 way pipe piece and drilling a tiny hole in the center of it to create a nozzle for the gas. The high velocity gas sucks air with it thus creating a air fuel mixture that burns much better than just the gas ignited by its own. Now it was just a matter of screwing on the pipes through which the gases and fumes travel to the condenser. To get the links sealed I used a Teflon sealing tape which is resistant to the hydrocarbons and acidic components that can form. When all is set up you simply need to hook the condenser up to the water supply and ignite the burner. As you can see the fuel air mixture is not right normally the flame should be all blue. The red shows us that there is not enough air in the mixture. But this can simply be solved by putting the carburetor straight behind the burner. The failure I made is that the pipe straight after the carburetor is angulated and not straight thus decreasing the flow rate and the amount of air that is sucked in the carburetor. But now let's get to the chemistry behind the process. 
All in all it is quite simple, organic molecules decompose at high temperatures, beginning at around 200 degrees Celsius. The macromolecules break down forming smaller molecules. The cracking down of the molecule size continues until the chains are small enough and the boiling point is low enough so that they can distill of and be collected in the collection vessel. Around 40% of the products are gases like methane ethene and many others, these can be used by simply burning them to heat the reactor, or they can be cracked further in liquid tin to break them down into carbon dust and hydrogen. This way allows to decarbonize the gases and reduce the carbon dioxide emission. One important point to make is that the pyrolysis of polyvinyl chloride can produce organic and aromatic chloro compounds. These are toxic and carcinogenic, so you should avoid polyvinyl chloride in this setup. Just a fun side note according to some papers I read is chlorobenzene the only chloro organic compound formed by the pyrolysis and the amount of it is quite small meaning that most of the chlorine bound in the polyvinyl chloride reacts into hydrogen chloride which can be dissolved in water and sold as hydrochloric acid. But the polyvinyl chloride problematic needs some further testing. Meaning that I will make some polyvinyl chloride only runs and analyze the results of it. And hopefully I find the right conditions and, or a other solution to prevent the formation of chloroaromatics. So now we are nearly at the end. After half an hour I noticed no more gas evolution and stopped heating. I tried to collect my pyrolysis oil but nearly none came out of the storing vessel, which made me kind of fucking angry, did I fail at such a simple task? As it turned out. No. I did not, it was simply too cold outside, so some of the formed paraffines crashed out and clogged the valve. So I simply screwed off one of the input connections and poured my crude oil into my storage container. And here you have it. Around 400 milliliters of pyrolysis oil ready to be analyzed and fractionated in the lab. Last fun note of the video, I already did a small work on this pro se which won a second prize at a science contest, but I was not good enough to win first. So I will improve and try to make a better paper and research. If you like to see it write it in the comments, and if there is any interest I can post my work, but be warned it is in German. So have fun and do not kill yourself.